In the late 19th and early 20th century, Paisley was at the height of its powers. In the space of a hundred years, it developed from a small town of artisan weavers into Fredopolis, the world's largest industrial manufacturer of thread. Two companies, Clark's and J&P Coates, were preeminent, and their mills, Atlantic, Anchor, Abbey, Fergalzi and Pacific, dominated the town. As Paisley developed, becoming not only Scotland's largest but richest town, it attracted workers from all over Scotland and Ireland. Tenements became the accommodation of choice for landlords, developers and residents alike from the 1840s to the 1920s. They offered high density occupancy and economical use of space and proximity to the mills. Whilst some of the tenements have been lost to redevelopment over the years, many still survive, and with them, the richly decorated, ornately tiled closes, popularly referred to as Wally Tiles. Well, I first started taking photographs of tiles probably about 30 years ago, and really that was for uh, work that I was doing, um, art-based work, and then I had kind of come across some tiles, maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, that really kind of sparked my interest again. I started taking more and more photographs, but the more I started taking the, the photographs, um, the more I started getting into the history of the actual tenements, um, the history of the tiles themselves, and also the kind of social history, because quite a lot of tenements have various um, quality of tiles. So really that, you know, it kind of grew. So when I started off um, really using it as a source for uh, art-based uh, work that I was doing, it's then kind of grown into more kind of historical um, work. Paisley's tenement tiles come in a wide variety of styles. The most numerous are Majolica, embossed Majolica, and tube line produced by companies such as Henry Richards, Milton and Hollands, Marstons and others. The zenith for the tenement tile was from the late Victorian period through the Edwardian and Georgian periods up to the First World War. The early influences were the arts and crafts and Art Nouveau movements. Art Deco, which appeared after World War I but declined during the Great Depression, refined decorative elements to largely geometrical abstraction but its presence in tenement closes is confined to tasteful two-tone colour schemes. Modernism, the prevailing art movement post-World War II, largely dispensed with decoration altogether. The writing was truly on the wall for decorative tenement tiles. The idea of adding the tiles to the closes was for hygiene reasons, um, but then you've got something else going on. You start adding on all the decorative elements to them. And I think that's more to do with desire, I suppose, to enrich people's lives and, you know, to have that element where, you know, people walk by these things every day and they're just kind of enriched. You know, the Victorians were quite considerate of morals and ethics and, you know, they really thought that a lot of this ornamentation would enrich people's lives to the point where they would be better morally. Um, and therefore better citizens and better workers and better, you know, just better all round, really. From the late 19th century, art, architecture and design increasingly adopted the American architect Louis Sullivan's dictum, form follows function. This trend continued into the early 20th century with Austrian architect Adolf Loos declaring, somewhat overdramatically, that decoration was a crime. With the advent of Bauhaus, the influential design school set up by Walter Gropius in Weimar, Germany in 1919, design increasingly emphasised simplification, rationality and functionality. By the time architects such as Le Corbusier and Mies van der Rohe, the heroes of modernism, had shipped in with a house is a machine for living in and less is more, 
decoration of any kind in domestic architecture was conspicuous by its absence. I think the, the tiles and the tenements as well, I think they're at risk of being overlooked and just being, you know, damaged continually as time goes on. When you get a close that has a lot of damage in it, nobody's going to pay to repair all that because it's so expensive now. They'll just take the tiles out and just plaster it or they'll put in new tiles. A lot of the housing associations have put tiled closes in, but, you know, they're not, they're not of the same standard as the original tiles. My main aim was to document what was there because I was very conscious of the fact that none of these pieces of well what I see is public art none of these pieces of public art are protected in any way and um, so my kind of main aim was to document what's there because it's not protected there's a good chance at some point it will just go and um, somebody will take it out somebody will rip it out it will get damaged beyond repair and then it's just gone forever. <laughs>